Recently, my LED sensors video generated some kind of interest. Apparently, several people are surprised that uh, you can use an LED as a light um, detector. Um, it's not a very common thing. You don't see it very often, and few people would think that it's possible, including myself, before I I read about it and finally tried it. Actually. You can use any LED, such as this one. This is a high brightness white LED. Nothing fancy, it doesn't even have a brand. So I didn't know any detail about this. But you can use it in addition to making it provide light by supplying it with proper current and voltage. You can also use it to record light. It's very simple and I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm just connecting it to a voltmeter just by using clips and this is what happens when we shine a light on it now we're talking very low voltages we are talking about the scale is 2 volts so we are barely into tens of millivolts but this happens with any kind of LED. Now this was a bright, high brightness white one. Uh, we can use a regular LED, such as this yellow one. Regular yellow LED. Notice that I'm not touching the leads at all. This one provides more voltage. Now you cannot use this voltage to provide energy for anything. I have tried. It just doesn't work. Otherwise we would say we would fix any energy problem in the world just by using an array of LEDs. But you can use it very simply because you can disconnect it this is the point you have to keep it disconnected if you were to connect this into a circuit it would not provide any voltage back I'd know the theory behind it so if anyone wants to expand on that please feel free to do so because I'm curious about it so what we do to use this as a light sensor is very simply we disconnect it we put it in Z mode or high impedance mode and then we quickly reconnect it which will discharge it and read the volume. Basically we provide reverse voltage to it. Disconnect it and read. It has to be said that LEDs are more, uh, are more sensitive to the same wavelength as they emit. So using a yellow LED as a receiver and a red one as a light provider will not really work. You should use two yellow LEDs or two infrared LEDs. In fact, you can, this also works with infrared LEDs. But in that case, you should use infrared light as a light source. Now, I'm just going to try this. Wow! This is an infrared LED and by its own it's providing quite some voltage. I'm getting close to one volt actually. So this makes it very, this makes infrared LEDs very useful for this kind of application. And in fact, that's exactly what Roland does in some of its keyboards. This is Roland VA7, and as you can see, it's got this D-beam controller, which is just marketing for the same thing I've been describing. You can see that these are two LEDs, one is always on, and one is always off. And what this does is that when you wave your hand in the air over it, you will change the sound or change any MIDI parameter. But it's really the same thing. One is always on, one is always off. So you don't really need to have two shining LEDs. As long as you have one that provides the same wavelength as what the receivers expect. And you can actually have a series of receivers and a series of providers, light suppliers, in any configuration depending on your application. So I hope I 
I've been shining some light, no pun intended, on the whole matter. And I'd like to see what everyone is building with this sort of system. For instance, it could be used for very quick and simple uh, touch sensors. It would not be touch sensor proper, but you could just have something that reflects the light as you shine your hand, as you move your hand over it. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.